gearbox I've been texturizing with uh, been using a Dremel. I mean, Craig said about using um, a die grinder on it, but I couldn't get it to skip. And it's no good just machining away aluminium. You've got to get it to skip over the surface. And I think it could be the, to do with speeds and everything. I mean, me, me die grinder actually was too quick. It just, you know, it would uh, make a right mess of it if I used that. So what I did very lightly, and you have to do it very lightly, just very lightly, just touch this on with a, a Dremel um, die grinder uh, attachment. Just go over the whole lot, it takes ages and it's laborious. And as you can see, it sort of leaves a, an inconsistent finish, you know, it sort of changes with the light and everything. So we're gonna make this all look uh, a nice bright silver. And to do that, I'm gonna use this stuff here. Um, rub and buff, or rub and buff. This is silver leaf. And it should just neutralize all this silver, you know, aluminium, just make it all sort of the same shade, which is what we're trying to do. As I say, I've shied away from doing it crinkle black. The idea was that I was gonna do the engine and the gearbox crinkle black, and then the outer panels uh, gloss black. But uh, although that would look nice, I'm just worried about touch up and when the muck gets in the paint, you know, it, it goes chalky, doesn't it? And I thought this is going to be far less, um, far less maintenance involved in this. It's masked up because it were only this morning I've decided not to paint it. I've watched a few videos on YouTube of people using that uh, VHT crinkle black and I uh, wasn't over impressed, you know. And I want to make sure it's about right. And to be honest, a, a maintenance free or maintenance easy sort of uh, option is much better. So that's that. So we'll get on with that. I'll set you up so you can have a look and um, I'll get on. Right. It is very messy stuff. So make sure you've got some gloves on. And, uh, and an old rag just to polish it off again. So this, as I say, this, uh, this, really does go far i mean <laughs> i bought six about six tubes of this off ebay and uh, to be honest i've not used the first one yet and i've done loads of stuff with it it absolutely goes to the moon and back um so just yeah just put a bit on your toothbrush don't need a lot and just uh work it in as far as you can go with it Less is better really, you know, just don't loads, put loads on. It will travel. And it keeps that texture there as well. So we're not filling any of that texture up that we've uh, put into the finish of the casings. It doesn't change it at all. I think as long as you've got um, texture anyway, this will do the job. If you've got a, a shiny finish, like a chromed, you know, something that's been chromed, it won't work for that. I mean, you'll, you'll get it on there, but it won't stay on. This seat really does stay on a long time. As I say, it just neutralizes all the uh, different colors you get in the aluminium from where you've been machining it. I say a little goes a long way, so. You're probably better off with a, a higher quality brush than these to be honest because these these are falling apart in, in front of my very eyes but they're not causing any harm and you can see how quick it takes i mean it's really quick to to use just quick buff up after I suppose that's why they call it rub and buff isn't it so just wiping it over just gives it that sheen it's what you want it's like very clean aluminium and it is, um, it's waterproof because it's a wax. It's not fuel proof. So if you do spill fuel on it, I wouldn't expect it to stay on very long. Oh, you can put it on with a rag if you want. It's up to you. You can put it on with anything, put it on with your finger. 
Right. Uh, quick buff up and you're done. Look at that. That's come up lovely, isn't it? So I'll turn that up that way. Do some of this. That's what I mean. It's all dark and horrible, you know, in places. And it'll even cover up, you know, muck, you know. <laughs> If you can't sort of clean your engine properly, it will sort of do a good job of covering up the odd mark. So that's that. I'll probably just put it all over it and then buff it all after. But even here, say, where it looks dark, you just put it in there. Look. It just neutralises the finish. I really ought to get a better toothbrush. You can get in there, look, doesn't matter. I think gonna arm nothing. This won't arm anything. Put this on anything. I suppose now I'll put it on the engine though, there's no chance of me painting it now because this will this wax will be embedded if you're right get to get out. But uh no, it's a last minute decision not to do the crinkle. Although I I, I still say it would look fantastic. But I don't want to take that risk. It's a lot of risk for, you know, not much in, you know, in the way of payback. Payback. All right, so that's that little bit in it. See the difference? Just look at the difference between them two, can't you? You know, you see, you see. It just gets rid of all that darkness. Darkness. I can't use a different toothbrush. Come on, shit. I mean, you can put too much on it. Don't matter. You can just polish it off after. It's so easy. The reason I'm doing this video, because I mentioned this to someone that was doing a live feed, and it's Brian Matson on uh, YouTube, and he'd never heard of it. So, oh, you know what? If you can, look, classic Hondas and things like that, this is ideal for your cylinder heads, you know. Get them all looking nice. We like nice. I'm just going to go over that. It doesn't matter. I'll wipe it off. You can wipe it off. A bit of white spirit or something gets it off easy. But say the shinier the surface, the less it wants to, you know, sort of adhere to it or stick to it. It doesn't stick, but, you know, work into it. Obviously, it needs the... Ah, oh, this toothbrush is no better. It's falling to bits. It's not the rub and buff that's doing this, it's just the fact it's a cheap old toothbrush. I bought about two dozen of them for a quid or something like that. Just do a bit on here now. There's a big dark grey bit, look there. It's not because it's mucky, it's just because it hasn't been machined. But say you put that on it, it just ties in with all the rest. And if it comes to the day when your, you know, engine's looking a bit grotty again, just uh, reapply. That's all you got to do. I think we're about there. So I'll just uh, give all this a bit of a buff up. It's more uniform, isn't it? The finish is more uniform and brighter. And that's it, that's rub and buff. Right, okay, well, I'll leave it at that for now and I'll see you all next time. All right, bye-bye.